Hello and welcome to the G3 Pulse podcast. Joining me today is Max Francis, the CEO, CTO and founder of Black Cow Technology. Uh, Max has worked in interactive gaming software since 1999, originally as a software developer and technical lead at Orbis Technology, then moving through quality management, pre-sales and commercial roles at OpenBet before establishing Black Cow nearly a decade ago. So Max, thank you very much for coming on. Yeah, great. Thanks for having me. You've worked in the gaming industry for over 20 years. So first off, what's kept you in the industry and where does your passion for gaming stem from? Mm. Uh, yes, 20 years. Thanks for that. Um, so <laughs> I, I, I entered the industry um, purely as a techie. I'm, I'm a techie at heart. Um, and uh, so I, I, I started working for Orbis as a software developer. Um, and I heard they were doing online betting at the time when, and thought, oh, that's, yeah, that's a, that's a good use of online transaction processing. That's, that's pretty cool. And so I, I stumbled into it accidentally in 1999 with Orbis um, doing sports betting, but then you know, grew with that role over the years. And as Orbis became open bet, my role changed from technical through to technical leading through to integration management and then some commercial roles and eventually contracts. And um, I, I, I did just about everything you could imagine doing at OpenBet in those in those 14 years um, and obviously increased knowledge. And, and uh, but by the end of 14 years, it was it was almost a, a perfect combination of experience to start my own software company. Essentially, that's probably what led to it. And how would you say that systems and software have changed over the last two and a half decades? Uh, so it's interesting. There's there's a lot of there's a lot of things that are very similar, and there's a lot of things that are very different. Um, so you know, computer programs still work the same way, of course, um, and they've just become a lot more powerful, a lot more scalable, a lot more parallelizable. Um, and uh, so the things people can do with them um, tend to be more sophisticated. But this all happens quite gradually, I think, you know, so you don't really notice at the time as 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 things are, are sort of on an, on an increase, you know. Um, on the game side, again, in a way that there's a lot of things that haven't changed about games and people still think the same way about games in many ways. People still think of the same features. Um, 90 percent of games probably do pretty much the same thing. Um, and once that's a successful formula, of course, people don't want to take the risks to try and do something else that might not work as well. You know, people won't, won't, won't risk their jobs by, by saying, yeah, let's, let's do something completely different. So it, it tends to develop very slowly. Um, but. Obviously, the graphics improve immensely and the speed of the games and the ideas, you know, there are more ideas there. But but generally, as an industry, we have been very, very slow to take up new ideas and, and, and innovate. Um, and uh, that's behind a lot of a lot of the reasons why I started Black Cow, actually, to which we can get on to, I guess. Is that something that frustrates you? I mean, I know you're not on the sidelines, you're in the industry, but you're not creating games yourself. You're facilitating that almost. So is that something that you look at and think? God, that is frustrating. Imagine what we could do. Or, mm. is it, or is it something that you think, well, the pie is big enough. You can't blame people for just grabbing the slice. Uh, no, I do find it frustrating. Yeah. I mean, there's, there's, a, there's a lot more that people could do. Um, and uh, particularly, I found this uh, towards the end of, of my time at OpenBet when uh, the software had, had become fairly sort of legacy at that point. It was, you know, very reliable, being used by great big lotteries and great big operators, but very, very hard to innovate on, very, very hard to change. Um, and as, as partnership manager there, actually, I saw a lot of great ideas and great uh, games just get dropped, just get, just, they weren't done because it was too hard to change it so that things paid out right to left or, 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 or Wilds worked in a certain way on a or Tuesday or, or whatever. It was, it was just too hard to innovate. Um, and and that frustrated me um and that's again you know one of the things that le led to me thinking there's there's just got to be a better way of, of doing this it's got to be a, a more modern platform let's start from scratch and build a more modern gaming platform that can handle that so so i think um yeah you know it it does frustrate me and it still frustrates me now people very much think about what's possible sort of yesterday and today and not so much about t tomorrow again sort of too much risk in there you know so I kind of don't blame people for not taking those risks all the time, putting their job on the line and saying, yeah, let's do something completely different. But it's lovely when people do. Uh, it's, you know, it's great when someone just at, at the right level within a company has been bought in to make a difference says, okay, well, you're going to have to trust me here. Let's, let's do things differently. We're going to go with these guys and we're going to do this thing. And you know, that, that's, that's, that's lovely when people do that. So that was your primary inspiration for establishing black cow technology back in 2013. Um, was there, was there something within you that thought maybe this won't work, maybe, or is it, or is it almost? I absolutely, for certain, know that this 
formula, this business will work? Mm. Um, well, I had an inaugural customer. I had an inaugural customer in, in Gecko Gaming who wanted an RGS. And I said, how about I build you an RGS? Uh, but I build it so that it's a flexible system that you can then take over. I walk away with the intellectual property of that after, say, a year. But you guys have a license to this system and you can innovate on it. So so I knew it would work from that point of view. Um, but... Um, I guess when that when people talk about when they're starting businesses, they they when they think back to when they started, you know, they think, well, if you know, it, it's only that I was so naive that I was able to do that, you know. <laughs> uh, but in fact, look, you know, look 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 where you've come to, you know, you 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 were able to do it actually, you know. Yes, it was ten times more complicated than you thought it would be, but you 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 did manage to do it, um, you know. So the job we start doing, uh, it it definitely becomes something different um, quite quickly. I'm sure that's the same with any any founder and any company is doing something you know anything from slightly different to completely different from from what they started off doing yeah and black cow's hero product is open gaming architecture or oga now this is something that as cto founder ceo all the rest this is your baby um so what is oga and what differentiates the product from anything else out there in the market mm, yeah good question yeah so the open gaming architecture is is a remote gaming server, an, an RGS, um, an iCasino backend, if if you like. Um, it's it's the part which securely generates game results um, and settles them with some sort of a, a wallet um, and keeps a secure record of of each and every of the details of each and every hand of blackjack or or or, uh, or spin of a slot or, or whatever. Um, so RGS systems are very hard to design um, to, so that they're flexible enough to model any kind of game um, without restrictions and limitations. Um, so what's different about Ogre is that it does support any kind of single player game. Um, any kind of feature uh, and any type of game. So slots, instance, table games, um, patchy slots, Kino, reactors, um, they're all supported by the same, the self same architecture with the same game engine development kit, you know, so literally from a fully featured craps game um, to a highly complex multi-level slot game with player trails over multiple, multiple games, multiple days. Um, but they're all supported by the same Ogre platform. Um, but probably our unique key is the, our game development kit. Um, so our game development kit is a, is a code kit for developers to use to, to, um, allow them to easily build, um, game engines that support any kind of game, um, and particularly slots. There's a lot of very rich functionality around building slots and helping people set up ways wins and scatter wins and, and, and mega ways and, and line wins and what, what have you. Um, there's actually a video I made where I create a game from scratch, literally from a blank blank text editor. I, cr I create a game engine in, in 15 minutes from scratch. It's kind of it's kind of a gimmick, but it's 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 if anyone's got a sort of slightly technical head on, uh, that's that's probably worth watching. Um, uh, and so um, the game development kit approach is what makes Ogre unique. I don't think there's another system out there with a game development kit. So, for instance, side bets. Um, any side bet can be added to a game. Um, it can be an existing game which knows nothing about side bets. And you can use our game development kit to, to, to add your own side bet onto a, an existing blackjack game or, or even a slot. Um, you know, so that's a good example of, of how uh, the, the functionality is supported for any kind of game, any kind of feature under the licensee's control. So they can develop it themselves or they can have their partners develop it or they can have us develop it. You know, so supreme flexibility is what it's all about and, and capability to model any kind of game. So that gaming capability, is that something that you've ever considered doing yourself? If you ever decide, you just said that you're even just as a gimmick that you can create a game within 15 minutes. I mean, that's pretty remarkable. Have you ever thought about establishing a studio or maybe you have a vested interest that you don't want to admit to on a podcast? Um, is it not something that you'd like to do yourself? Um it, it's a different skill entirely. Um, we get asked that question a lot as well as, you know, why don't you host your own system? Why don't you host your I game, your own casino? You know, um, it, it's, you know, for the same reason that we don't also open a florist shop. Um, you know, it's a different thing. It's a, it's a different kind of business, you know, different set of risks. You know, we are, we are, we are good at one thing and we, and, and we, we work very hard to, to, to remain good at that thing and, and get better at that thing and design awesome systems around that thing. And that thing is back end systems for uh, for allowing other people to build games. You know, so so you know, we're not mathematicians, we're not front end designers, we're not artists. Um, you know, we're not we're not game product uh, people. We are we are back end software platform engineers, um, and you know that's that's what we concentrate on doing well. 
And from a technical standpoint, I mean, how was Ogre? I mean, previously I said OGA. I don't know how I always manage it. Whenever, if it's a company name like Gig, I always say G-I-G or SIS, I say S-I-S, and then I'm always corrected. But how has Ogre grown and adapted since its creation from a technical standpoint? Hmm. Um, so the the use of um of ogre has has grown uh, from the days when we first engineered it for gecko gaming who were a relatively small operator they're part of playtech now um but uh we had to we had to firm up the architecture as it started being heavily used um you know so um for example um draftkings use it as as their online online casino in in the us uh and you know it it has handled literally billions of 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 bets it's taken billions of bets um so you know we had to do some we had to do some work um on its on its scalability and its reliability um uh, although funnily enough, we didn't have to change the architecture, you know, that, 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 what they, what they were interested in, they got the vision, um, and they understood how it would give them the power to build their own games. Um, and so that remained, uh, we just had to make, uh, we just had to tweak it in the back end to, to make it faster, more efficient. And, uh, and, and, you know, they, they scaled it essentially on their architecture. Um, so, uh, we, we've built a lot of capabilities, um, and particularly with our, with our closest partner, um, Playzido. Um, so over the years, we've gradually added more and more functionality to it. Uh, we built a GraphQL back office interface, um, which allowed Playzido to build their own back office. They, they had this vision of a, of a, of a sort of super cool um, multi, multi capability black back office. Um, so we said, well, how about we build you the API that so you can build your own back office on top of it? You know, that's very much our philosophy to, to give our partners, um, our licensees, the tools to, uh, to empower them to build the things they want to build or use their partners to build the things they want to build. So, you know, rather than us producing a certain back office, which works in a certain way, I mean, there is one, but, you know, we'd rather produce the tools so that people can build their own um, back office, their own bets, you know, their own architecture, their own, you know, whatever it is they want to do. Um, so yeah, we you know we've had a lot of features over the years. We've added more game capability uh, to that game development kit. Um, you know, so it, it originally started by supporting slots. We've added um, you know cards, shoes, decks, tables. You know, so there's blackjack, there's baccarat. Um, we, we've added uh, the side get pay, the side bet capability. Um, we've also added um, jackpots as well now. So there's a, there's a jackpot, a standalone jackpot server which Ogre talks to, sort of part of the Ogre product really. Um, and a similar philosophy there. Any kind of jackpot feature can be supported um the jackpot logic is within the game engine itself not the jackpot server um and so uh you know again because you know one of our customers wanted to do some jackpots we we, we, we built a jackpot capability in there with with that same game development kit mentality um you know so we've grown with our with our licensees um over the years um and as they've wanted us to add capabilities to the platform and as they've used it for for various different um purposes shifting briefly away from the technical aspects is that something that you like do you like having a small number of licensees where you can be their greatest partner and you can work with them constantly and you grow together or are you continually looking for new business and new licensees to work with mm. so i mean both of those things um but we yes we we get on best being a close partner um, to a few big customers, um, for, for sure. Yeah. Um, that works really well. Um, if, <clears throat> if it takes a while to, to work out the best way for any supplier and, 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 uh, and customer to, to, to work out how the best way to work together. Um, but we what we do is we concentrate on building capabilities, um, software platform capabilities so that our partners, our licensees can build their own features on top of those capabilities. That way they don't have to share their IP with anyone else. They don't have to, you know, they, they, if they've got a feature that they've worked hard to develop or a great idea and we implement that on the platform, then, you know, that's not good for them. Obviously that loses their competitive advantage. So our approach is to build a capability in the software platform that allows them to build their own software library, um, their own game engine, their own feature their own side bet their own back office whatever that might be um that works really well um and and if we especially have been working with a we, we've worked with you know some of our partners for a number of years you know and so after a good nine months to a year you know we're getting we're getting pretty used to how each other works and they can guide us uh, along where we can help them innovate and we can guide them along technical capabilities and, and, and how they can innovate on those platforms, you know, so we, we really can complement each other that way. And there's no fears about, of, of, of their, their products going to, to their competitors through us. So would you say that customer, 
customer demands of what an RGS should do haven't so much changed. It's more what customers are demanding of games has changed. So as a result, you as an RGS partner has had to adapt what you do. Um, so people do have trouble understanding the capabilities that Ogre gives them. Um, basically because there's a lot of very bad RGSs out there. There are an, a lot of RGSs out there. Um, and the, the biggest objection we hear um, to, to our sale is, um, oh, well, I, you know, I, I know someone who's got an RGS for, for 50 grand. You know, why would I pay you X when I can, I can get an RGS for 50 grand? You know, well, for the same reason that, you know, yes, you can get a Mercedes for 50,000 pounds or you can get a Lada for 300 pounds. You know, yes, yes, I'm sure you can get a car for 300 pounds. Uh, you know, so it's it's hard to make people understand how Ogre is different um, because people are so used to very, very poor and inflexible RGSs. Um, and or if people haven't been involved in that, they can't imagine the problems that they're going to face building their own. So a lot of our biggest competition is pe people building their own RGSs. Yes, and, and, and you know, a fair amount of our sales sales uh, relationships end with um, our, the prospect saying, Do you know what, we're going we're gonna to build our own, you know, and we say, well, you know, good, good luck with that. Best of luck with that. You know, genuinely best of luck with that. You will find it's, it's orders of magnitude more complicated than, than you yeah. think, even if you know what we're doing, what you're doing, because, you know, we knew what we were doing and it was, it was much more complicated than we thought. Um, so, you know, it's, there's, there's now 50 man years of work in Ogre. Um, so, you know, you, people say, oh, we're going to, yeah, we're going to build it for ourselves and have it, you know, put some games live in nine months. It's like, mm, okay, go for it. You know, <laughs> And, you know, you, you'll be back and, you know, we'll be talking to you in, in a year and a half, two years time. And you'll be saying you, you still won't have it, you know, uh, yeah. and you found that many times, you know. So people massively underestimate technology anyway, because it, you know, it, it's it's ease of use belies its complexity. Um, but uh, it's particularly hard to sell these features that people when people think, well, we, we can just develop that. though, And, and you know, they don't understand how, how hard that is to do. Um, you know, so that's always a challenge. Um, and so people don't understand that that they can take control of their game pipeline. Um, and if they're, if they're the right size, they're the right kind of operator, they can do that. Um, and people just haven't thought that through yet. You know, so as I said, DraftKings got it. Um, Playzito got it. Um, and, uh, you know, we've had some good conversations with people, um, but, you know, it's still, it's particularly in the US, it's very hard to get people to imagine having their own game platform and working with partners to build their own, their own features, their own, their own unique set of games and features. Whilst technology is advanced, would you say that the software systems and solution architecture you see in industry now, despite these advances in tech, are as well designed and thought through now as when you started out at Orbis, for instance? It's one of that, yeah, it's like if you talk to somebody who's really into their architecture, oh, buildings now aren't built like they used to be, um, despite, despite the fact they're much more efficient. Um, would you go along that line of thought for your sector of work? they're more sophisticated now for sure and they use better technology um and they're and they're better designed than they were um for sure um but i think the gaming industry technically lags other industries um in in what it does and what it can do just because it's it it, it, it doesn't really innovate very fast at all um so uh, you know things have got more sophisticated languages are more sophisticated now and, and people aren't so constrained by certain tools you know now for instance you you can use a, there's a lot more open source um software available out there which is which is industry grade um open source um platforms whereas you used to have to license something like websphere and or or, 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 or oracle or whatever now you can use Postgres for free and it's good, you know, it's, it's good enough. Um, and so uh, the technology is much better and, and there are some great solutions out there for sure, but they tend to be built for that particular, that particular function uh, without thought to the flexibility needed to be able to model any kind of game. Um, so you know that's that's where systems still fall down you know there is there are constraints on people to get this thing out of the door as fast as possible um well the problem we're solving is today's problem you know let's not bother solving tomorrow's problem that we don't even know what it is yet you know and there's there's some correctness to that kind of thought that avoiding early optimization um but 
Um, if you can, if, if, if you have sufficient knowledge about what games tend to do and what people tend to do with them and, and the pitfalls people fall into in building systems, you can build a, a good set of capabilities for, for, for a system so that people will be, will be able to innovate on it. Um, that's the challenge. And that's, that's the position most people aren't in. They don't have enough of a view to understand that that's what they've got to do. So it's not the technology so much preventing them. It's their understanding of the things they're probably going to be asked to do the day after tomorrow on this system. And with that in mind, what's next in the development of Ogre and how can the platform be improved from where it is today? Mm. So our exciting big, big, uh, project right now is our multiplayer server. Um, so we are building the multiplayer equivalent of Ogre. Um, and uh, we've we've got a multiplayer framework now, which will support any kind of transactional multiplayer game um, with with a push architecture, um, which is which is really cool. It's really exciting. So we've built um, a, a multiplayer roulette, a multiplayer backer app so far, um, but it can support um, any kind of multiplayer game, whether that's a timed draw um, or you know a, a bunch of people betting on, on a back of our hand every minute or a roulette wheel spinning every minute, or whether it's a turn-based game like, like Blackjack where people are waiting on each other um, or any kind of multiplayer game. Um, so we've also just started working on multiplayer slots as well using that architecture. Um, so those will be multiplayer community, community bonus round slots. Um, that's really exciting. Um, and um, it's, it's, it's a nice new way of developing because it's all uh, it's, it's all what we call asynchronous architecture. So that's things just happening when they happen, um, event driven um, programming, essentially. Um, and um, there, I think this is multiplayer servers. Uh, there's a couple of them around, um, but as as more multiplayer games start to be produced, people will start to think of all the extra things they can do uh, with multiplayer games. There's a whole bunch of stuff out there that people haven't even thought of yet. So, for instance, I I, I thought a nice idea would be like 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 a hundred hand uh, video poker. Why not have like a hundred hand slot? You know, a hundred people playing a slot all at the same time, uh, and they all share their big syndicate or something. You know, that's just just an idea that sort of popped out of my head. I'm sure there's there's myriad ideas that that people will only start thinking of once they have their hands on this architecture and once there's a few few products out there um, working and then people start thinking, hey, hey, how about that? But with this um, or, uh, or or emulating what goes on in, in a casino, in a land based casino, um, you know, 10 people sitting around a, a, yeah. a, with, a, with a bunch of slots all connected to each other and, and sharing each other's uh, prizes and, and what have you, you know, so yeah. Multiplayer server is the is 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 the future. Um, probably our our future growth area. Uh, certainly our exciting technical development right now. Um, and you know that's 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 going to also allow us to have a much more scalable system. Ultimately, I think that architecture could probably also support single player games as well. Um, so you have a you you, you can have clients. <coughs> um, Firing off more requests, faster requests um, to the server, um, and you know, playing playing more games, um, offering more single player gameplay as well as multiplayer gameplay on that architecture. You know? So that's that's all pretty exciting. And switching hats, so mo a lot of our discussion so far has been on the technical side and more the, the CTO side of what you do, but you're also CEO and founder of the business. So, how would you reflect on the growth of the company over the last nine years? Um, is there anything that you're particularly pleased with um, and you're passionate about? Maybe one deal or moment that you reflect on retrospectively as being of critical importance um, to getting the company to where it is today? And maybe any regrets, maybe you didn't go down a particular angle. Um, just, just kind of throwing that out there, just to see how you reflect from a business perspective, how the company has done over the last nine years. Mm, yeah. Um, so probably our most significant deal um, that's led to the most uh, the most good things happening and 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 the most work useful work on the software was was our Playzido deal. Um, so we started Playzido as a joint venture with Endemol Gaming uh, back in 2017, um, <clears throat> and the idea was to put Endemol Gaming's games on a on a platform uh, and for that joint venture to host and manage that platform, a, a, an RGS as a service, if you like, a game aggregator as a service, and invite game producers to put their games on that platform. Um, 
And um, that worked really well. Um, that we, we worked very, very closely with Playzido. Um, we understood a lot more about how our architecture actually works in practice. Um, Cause we, funnily enough, as a software company, we don't actually get involved in the running of our software. We don't actually run our own software. Um, so it was interesting to be closely working with Playzido and understanding um, how, how that works, um, what works well, what doesn't work so well. Uh, and as I said, build, then building a back office on our APIs and, and they, they got us to add some um, freeback functionality, some, some promotional freeback functionality. And out of that, they built a really nice campaign manager product. Um, and so uh, that model worked really well. And they, 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 they produced a lot of games and a lot of integrations um, with that architecture. They were really successful. Um, and, and then, so they, they went on actually to be acquired, um, but last year by Light and Wonder. So they are now Light and Wonder's internal game aggregation platform. Um, you know, so that, that worked well. Um, and now that platform is being scaled out to, to, you know, lots of more data centers and US and Canada and, uh, you know, all sorts of, all sorts of things going on there. So, um, you know, that was really nice that, that we started this, started this thing. It was a good commercial deal and it was a good operational deal. Um, and it, and it did a lot of work to the software, um, and hardened that software where, you know, battle hardened it um, and, you know, prove, prove, prove the vision that, you know, what about an RGS that allows people to very quickly build games? You know, they, they built, you know, well over 100 games in like in three years to very quickly do integrations against wallets. They, they did something like eight, nine, 10 integrations uh, during those, those three years, um, you know, and, and so the model was proven um, and that worked, that worked well. Um, you know, so, so, so yeah, you know, I, th I think that, that was a, a defining, um, commercial deal for us. Um, you know, but obviously working with, with sort of large companies like, like DraftKings also, also helped a lot. Um, and giving them the independence to do what they, they wanted to do with a game platform, um, with, a, with our platform sitting there doing that for them. Um, so, you know, for the, for the future, um, I think, um, there, the U.S. is in a strange place right now, um, and uh, it's all about sportsbook over there, and and it's even harder to sell the vision to them of look, you could take control of your own gaming system here with this architecture, and you know, innovate and have your own branded games, your own features that no one else has, your own games that no one else has. Um, that's a jump. That's too much of a leap for them at the moment because they're very very focused on on paying back some of the marketing they've spent and and. Uh, uh, it's all about sportsbook for, the, for them right now, or maybe some casino games. Um, so, you know, there's a lot, there's a lot available still in Europe, I think. Um, and, but uh, I think Canada is a really interesting growth area. You know, yeah. we're doing, we're doing some good work in Canada. Tends to be a bit slow because they're all uh, government departments essentially, but they, they can innovate. They've got a good spirit of innovation, uh, there and that's working well. We're doing some good work with them. Um, and also, um, Far East, of course. Um, you know, there's, 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 that's a still a very untapped market. Um, and, um, yeah, you know, some, something that we'd like to get more involved into. Oh, fantastic. Uh, it, I guess the last thing I'd like to ask is for those listeners or readers, if you read in the transcript, um, where can they find you if they want to meet you? Are there any kind of iGaming events that you're going to be going to over the next few months? Hmm, that's a good one. Um, <laughs> well, they've just missed SBC, I guess, where uh, <laughs> where our, our commercial director Tony Plasco was. Um, essentially, um, Tony Tony's your man right now. Tony Plasco is 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 pretty much found everywhere at, at you know at every trade show going on. Um, and uh, just have a look at our website, and um, you know Tony's details are on on there too. Um, so you know we'd love to hear from anyone who who wants to know more about what we do and how we do it because it is different what we do and how we do it is different, and we are still trying to you know make make that difference there and give people tools that they can build their own stuff with um you know which doesn't really exist out there as, as a model other than us I, th I think um you know we are pure b2b and we are we purely supply that platform you know in reference to your question earlier we, you know we, we deliberately don't build our own content um you know a lot of rgs's you can get on the market out there are so and so's rgs but they build their content on so you're always going to be in competition with them whereas you know we this is purely what we do. We we provide RGS platform software, and we work as a partnership with our with our licensees to to help them um, innovate on that on that software. You know, so hopefully there's a lot more innovation to come as people understand that vision and understand that they can you know do these things relatively risk free, um, and and you know to hopefully encourage some people to to really make a difference and do some cool things. Um, Max, thank you very much for coming on the podcast. Your passion really really shines through. So I look forward to our next chat. I'm sure there'll be one. Brilliant. No, thanks a lot. It's been great to be here. Some interesting questions. Thanks a lot, William. Thank you. Cheers.